Hi, my name's Natalie. Welcome to Vintages. Today we're going to be talking about the wondrous Bakelite and how to check its authenticity. Bakelite is an incredibly collectible early plastic sported by many vintage enthusiasts. Now, there is actually, because it's so very collectible and quite valuable um, nowadays, there's a lot of fake light that's being produced. And fake light in itself, there's nothing wrong with it, it's fantastic. I want you to actually check out um, splendet.com, I think they're .com. I'm going to put a link in their information bar, in the information bar about them, um, because I've been looking and drooling over their Instagram feed recently. And they have some gorgeous pieces of fake light, which is great because you're paying fake light prices there. But if you're under the assumption that a piece of fake light is fake light and you're paying top dollar for it, for it then when you get it, you are going to be gutted. You need to be sure of how to test for your Bakelite pieces authenticity. Now there are a number of ways of doing so and in this video I'm going to show you uh, numerous different plastics. Here we have celluloid, um, Bakelite, acrylic, um, which is lucite but I've also got a lucite bangle here and some plain old, not sure what it is, very light, very cheap um, plastic that is kind of imitation Bakelite. So we're going to test all of these um, with numerous known Bakelite tests. So first of all I want to start with the friction test which a lot of people use when they're out and about and they've spotted a bit of um, jewellery they think might be Bakelite. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory really. You hold a bead or the bangle, whatever you've got, um, and you use your thumb to just rub on the bead on the piece of plastic until you feel heat. You've created friction and then if you give it a whiff you should be able to smell a slightly formaldehyde which smells like a science classroom. If you don't know what formaldehyde smells like, slightly chemically smell on the bead. Now all I can smell is my nail polish at the moment so that is not a surefire test. Maybe rubbing it on your jeans as well. If you're wearing trousers, you could maybe give it a rub because that creates quite a lot of friction. Then you're going to get, that's better, a nice, well, not a very nice chemically smell. It actually smells nice to me because I go, oh, big light, oh, it's big light, oh my God. Okay, so a nice um, science-y classroom stink to that. That friction test is a pretty reliable way to, to tell if it's Bakelite because it, you're smelling the actual material, the actual chemicals that are used to produce the plastic and lucite, acrylic, fake light just aren't going to have that. Another way you can get the smell of Bakelite is to run it under hot water. Now keep it under there for maybe 20 seconds. Obviously you can't do this in a shop situation but if you're at home, if you've bought the Bakelite piece, run it under the hot water, a bead or an edge of the piece for about 20 seconds. Make sure the whole thing gets a chance to heat up and then just smell the vapours and under hot water Bakelite will smell pretty much like formaldehyde. Um, there is one piece I have here that doesn't smell very much which is interesting. Little bit. So you do have to be careful. Some will stink straight away and some will be a little bit more subtle. That's why you have numerous tests. Now another test uh, that people swear by is the Simichrome polish test. Now Simichrome polish is a German polish but it's mainly available in America. It's not easily found in the UK. I've had to, uh, I think I eBayed or Amazon it, but it gives really good results now. You use Simichrome by taking just a small piece on a cotton um, Q-tip or a cotton pad, just a titchy tiny bit. You can see it's this nice quite light pinkish colour. I'm going to rub it here on these lovely dark cherry red Bakelite beads and you will see that this lovely pink colour, sorry for my eyes sometimes look a bit squiffy but the, I'm using a phone today and the, the viewfinder is a bit, a bit offed. Right so let's do it in the light. Just going to take one of the beads and rub it on. Keep on polishing. 
just give it a nice rub. You could do this on an inconspicuous area, might be an idea first of all. Now what this is doing is taking off the patina um, that's developed through oxidisation on the bead over weeks, months and years. And you're just taking it off with a simichrome and that's what should hopefully show up on your cotton pad as a nasty little stain. Now do bear in mind that you could be just polishing off dirt so you've got to look for certain things. A brownish yellowish tint is one of them. Some say it's akin to nicotine and you can definitely see um, certain nicotine-esque shades in there. There's another test called the, what's it called, scrubbing bubbles or something, that's an American cleaner. Um, widely available in America, not so much in England, so we can't use scrubbing bubbles over here and that gives a very definite nicotine yellow stain to the um, to the cotton. Um, but this can sometimes come off as a browny colour, brownish reddish colour. Basically, if the liquid, if the paste turns a different colour, then you've got yourself some fake light, baby. Along, as long as you've got positives on the other tests. Okay, so I'm going to go with the lighter cherry red here on a bead. Again, do it in an uh, inconspicuous area first. And there again, you've got a really brownish, yellowy, kind of nicotine kind of colour. Now, as I said, Simchrome is widely available in the US, um, not so much in the UK. I had to Amazon this and it costs £15, which is quite a hefty price tag for such a small tube, although you don't use very much of it when you're using it and it's a great polish overall. However, if you go to your local supermarket, if you're in the UK, you can buy Silvo for about £3 and this gives pretty good results. Let me show you. So Silvo is a rather lovely sagey green colour and it's a lot more liquid than um, Simichrome. So I'm just gonna take my cotton bud and put some sagey green kind of silver on there and we'll see the color that we get from our Bakelite pieces with this silver because I'm pretty sure we're gonna get some positive tests. Now this is my favorite Bakelite piece of the moment. It's a beautiful carved, glossy, shiny dragon pin brooch. How lush is that? And we're just going to give it a little polish on the back, see what happens. Okay, I've actually got an awful lot of silver on this thing. You don't use very much. I'm gonna actually get it off with another one because that's too much. Scrabber, scrabber, scrabber. I'm pushing quite hard. And there we have a little yellow stain. It's not as positive as the Simichrome, although with Simichrome that brooch does test incredibly positive. Um, but there is a difference in the colour. Can you see it's no longer sage green, but kind of that nicotine colour. And um, I'll try a little comparison. So that's the... Uh, that's the dragon brooch with this uh, silver. And the dragon brooch with the simichrome. So you can see it is a lot darker with the simichrome but there's still, it's the same colour, it's the same um, sh same tone lighter shade. You're looking for this nicotine colour really. This is a chartreuse um, double bangle with a quite heavy patina throughout that should give a nice positive result. So let's go with the Simichrome first. And now the Silvo, I'll do it on the same cotton pad. I had to change cotton pads there because it's really hard to control the amount of Silvo that's coming out. It's very liquidy. So again, there's the um, Nicotini colour quite light compared to the darker comparison of the Simichrome, but still it's still there. So I think if you're in the UK 
and you're not interested in selling your, your Bakelite on, I think if you're going to sell the Bakelite then this is a pretty much internationally recognised test of authenticity. If you're not if you're just worried about you know your own pieces then I think you can test with Silvo um, and hot water. Uh, there's one more test that you have to hear to understand. It's the clunk test of two Bakelite pieces banging together which is apparently um, indicative of their authenticity and this is the sound it makes and we're going to compare that to some non bakelite bangles I have some um, lovely lucite bangles here it's clink clink Clunk, clunk, clunk. Can you hear the difference? And they're not particularly in different weights or sizes. Lucite. Bakelite. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Experts will instantly be able to tell the noise of a Bakelite bangle. Um, Oh, that one's quite good actually, that's what I wanted to show you. However, this, which I thought might possibly be Bakelite, turns out not to be. No um, reaction with Simichrome or Silver and no smell under hot water. So I'm 100% sure it is not Bakelite. Let me show you. Simichrome negative. <clears throat> really hard because I was really wishing oh please be make like please I kind of knew in my heart it wasn't just slight darkening that's just the grub on the bracelet of the simichrome polish and with the silvo again just the slight darkening of the silvo polish so <laughs> not bake light however no, that's clinking. I thought it was going to clunk. It's clinking. Clink. 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 Clunk. Clunk. See? Difference. <clears throat> this is a celluloid. Um, bangle. Now celluloid is one of the very earliest plastics made, in fact probably the earliest plastic and it's actually really flammable so um, be careful if you are applying lots of friction to it because you don't want it to explode in your face. Um, this reacts with Simichrome thus. darkening of the Simichrome paste with Silvo again just a slight darkening under hot water this smells lovely almost instantaneously it smelt of camphor which is like Vicks vapor rub fragrant and lovely that was really very nice I have another celluloid bangle here which is in carved coral very early 1920s celluloid bangle and again that just smelt beautifully of camphor when I ran it under the hot water. Here, this again another one that I was hoping was going to be Bakelite turned out not to be. Let me just show you, can you see it looks quite, quite cherry Bakelite. So let's just see with the old Simichrome, we'll get a negative result on this so just darkening of the polish there's no there's no change in color of the polish there's no nicotine brownie from the patina it is just a darkening of the 
Simichrome. And I've tested this again and again and again and again and again because obviously when you find a piece of jewellery you want it to be Bakelite, um, but it really it isn't. Um, tips are never to rely on just one test. You must try as many as you can to determine the authenticity of your Bakelite piece because some may test strong on one test but weak on others. You have to have a combination. Fakelite can even test super positive with Simichrome polish coming out a really, really bright yellow but it does not smell under hot water so you really need to combine the two. Basically, if it seems too good to be true, if someone's selling you Bakelite and it's only £2.50, then it probably is too good to be true. Just bear that in mind also. And that's not to say that everyone out there is a scam artist. Some people are just ignorant of the facts, so also bear that in mind as well. This bangle is a Lucite bangle, and I know that because it says it right on here. Um, genuine Lucite. And I'll show you how that tests with Simichrome also. Just a darkening of the polish. So that's the end of this video. I really hope that it's helped you and I hope that you can use it to help you test your Bakelite pieces for authenticity. If you have any, um, I definitely recommend um, Simichrome polish for the most um, positive positives. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely if you can't get hold of this and you've got a local supermarket that sells Silvo then go for this because it also gives good and consistent results. Thanks so much for watching, take care, bye!